I think this is working. Who knows? I'm channeling my inner Mariah Carey. Right then. Gotta love a bit of Mariah. If you don't love Mariah, then I can't help you. So I'm assuming we're live. We're good to go. If you are watching, let me know. You know that uh, with this struggle series, I am trying to reach half a million women and inspire them to better living. So please make sure you're sharing this stuff about. And also, if someone could make sure when the lockdown is over, I go get a haircut. I didn't realize quite how bad it's gotten, but there we go. So this is episode seven of the struggle series. And today we are covering worrying. Um, Worrying in itself, is out of the way so not distracting you, is another form of anxiety. Um, it's distress that is caused by fears over a potential experience or an event. Um, and if you've been following my stuff, you'll start to notice that there are parallels between many of these things. So anxiety, fear, worry, they're all linked, which is actually a really good thing because it makes them easier to deal with because you can work at the roots. When you tackle the roots, the trunk will die and then the branches will follow. So, you know, all of these things being interlinked and manifesting in different forms is actually a really good thing because it makes them easier to deal with. At the end of the day, worry itself is normal. Everyone experiences it at one point or another, but when it becomes persistent and it starts to manifest in all areas of your life, it can cause big issues, just like anxiety. So many of us spend our lives worrying about things that haven't and may never happen. Um, Seneca said it well. He said there, I've written this down. Let me just get this up. Hang on. He said, there are more things likely to frighten us than there are to crush us. We suffer more often in imagination than in reality. And I think that is so true. So true. I mean, how many times have you worried yourself sick over something only for it to either not materialize at all or to have been nothing like what you'd imagined to have been half as bad or not even bad at all? I know I've done it many times. As human beings, we have wonderful imaginations. We're capable of these incredible visions and they can be a help or they can be a hindrance depending on your ability to utilize them. When it comes to worrying, we can create an event in our mind and have it feel so realistic that we believe this to be true. And the more we think about it, the stronger that vision gets. Even if we logically know it probably won't happen the way we're envisioning it, the feelings that are there are enough to override that logic and to make it real and to make it persistent and to make it stick there in the front of your mind constantly on and on and on because your feelings always win. Feelings will always, always win out against logic. If you have a vision, whether that is a vision of something good or something bad, and you back it with feelings, it will become real. And that, as I said earlier, can work either for you or against you. So if you think of the times where you've been dreaming um, and it, it feels so real that you can feel things happening in the dream and then you wake up and you don't actually know where you are and you swear that it was true, because it was so real. It's really, really powerful. And we're built for that. We imagine things, we exaggerate, we anticipate. But learning how to use those things can be truly transformational. It's the difference between someone who wastes their life worrying about bad things that they think are going to happen and someone who then spends their life creating the things that they see happening. There's a big difference. At the end of the day, shit happens and it's going to happen to all of us. And we can't know what, we can't know when, we can't know why, and we can't know how. Worrying about it is pretty much a thankless task because at some point, you're gonna prove yourself right. You know, you might be worrying about something for five years and then it happens, you go, see, I was right, I told you that was gonna happen. It probably will at some point because life happens. It may not be the way you imagined it to have happened, but things are gonna happen. It's part of being human, it's part of the beautiful mess that we call living. 
but the time that you spend, <coughs> excuse me, waiting for things to happen and driving yourself nuts in anticipation over it, is time that you could have spent living your life and training yourself to deal with things so that when the shit does hit the fan, you're in a position to deal with it. At the end of the day, you're worrying. But what happens if it doesn't happen? How will you feel? And then what happens if it does happen? How will you feel then? It's the same, probably. You're going to be anxious, over overwhelmed, stressed, and unable to deal with anything. So the trained person, on the other hand, will live on when those things don't happen. And they will live on when those things do happen. Because they're going to happen. But the difference is what happens when they happen or when they don't happen. So while worrying is, is very much a normal thing, it can be huge for some people and it can affect their lives massively to the point where it ruins it. But much like anything else, it can be beaten. It can be shifted and transformed. I don't think beaten is perhaps a qu qu quite the right word there because that conjures up images of having to fight against it. And obviously you already know if you follow my work that anything we fight against only gets stronger. But it's something that you can change it, you can transform it, no matter how bad it seems or how stuck you feel. You can trust me when I say that anyone can train their way to a better life because a better life starts with you and you always have control over you. I think Seneca said it the best. He said, perhaps it will come, perhaps not. In the meantime, it is not. So look forward to better things. And I'm going to say that again because I think that's really powerful. Perhaps it will come, perhaps not. In the meantime, it is not. So look forward to better things. And I think I'm going to leave it at that. You don't need to hear me waffling anymore when Seneca said it so well. Um, on Monday, I'm going to go live in the Limitless group with a little exercise in dealing with worries. So it's going to be a real example on how to train yourself in something of this nature and how to get a result from it so if you want to join us for that you need to follow the link in the comments which i'm going to post up in a second and then just jump into the group i'll be back on saturday for episode eight of the struggle series we're nearing the end i'm only going to do 10 of these unless i feel inspired to do a couple more but remember i want to hit 500,000 women so you guys that's you pointing at you need to share this okay so when you're at home you're sitting there and you're uh, locked down and you're bored. Share this. Katie, my hair is nuts, mate. Seriously. Think about the times that you cut it when we were teenagers. Crazy. Oh, now I feel really old. Really old. Anyway, I'll finish waffling for today. Get your asses in the group and then I'll, uh, I'll see you all on Saturday for episode eight. Have a wonderful evening, guys.